Hello everyone, welcome to Hamanry Games. In this episode, we want to create a stylized low poly tree pack in Blender and then import it into it. Open Blender and make sure you're in the default scene. Delete everything in that scene. Press Shift A to open the Add menu, then select Mesh and choose Cylinder. In the Add Cylinder option on the left side of the viewport, set the vertices value to 12. Press S to scale the cylinder and then press Shift Z to constrain the scaling to the X and Y axis only. Adjust the size or enter a specific value to scale it as desired. Switch to wireframe mode. Select the top vertices of the cylinder. Press S to scale the selected vertices down to create the desired shape. To apply the rotation and scale, press Ctrl A and select rotation and scale from the menu that appeared. Finally, right click on the object and select shade smooth. Add a cube to your scene by pressing Shift A, selecting Mesh and then choosing Cube. With the cube selected, enter Edit Mode by pressing Tab. Ensure that all edges of the cube are selected by pressing A, press Ctrl B to bevel the edges. Move your mouse to adjust the bevel size and scroll up or down to add or reduce the number of segments. Once the bevel is applied, press Ctrl T to select all the faces and convert them into triangles. Exit Edit Mode by pressing Tab. Apply the shape smooth to our cube. Duplicate the cube by pressing Shift D. Scale down the duplicated cube by pressing S and adjust its size to add further variation. Rotate the duplicated cube along the Z axis, press R and Z and move your mouse to rotate. Repeat the steps once more to create another duplicated and modified cube. Select the object to which you want to add the texture. Switch to the shading workspace by selecting it from the top menu. In the shading tab, you should see a node editor where you can create and edit materials. With the selected object still active, click on the new button in the material section to create a new material. Don't click on the default material name and rename it to your desired name, such as tree, material, or any other appropriate name. Drag and drop your color palette image into the node editor area. This will create an image texture node with your color palette connected. Connect the color at of the image texture node to the base color input of the principal PSDF node. This will assign the color palette to the material. Select the other objects in your scene that you want to apply the material to. Hold Shift and click on each object to select multiple objects. While still holding Shift, select the object that already has the desired material applied. This object should be the active object, and the others should be selected as well. Press Ctrl L and select Link Materials from the menu. This will link the material from the active object to all the selected objects. Now let's proceed with adjusting the UV mapping for the layers of the tree. In the 3D viewport, switch to the UV editing workspace by selecting it from the top menu. Go to the front view and then go to the UV menu and select project from view while having the layers selected. This will project the layers UVs based on the current view. In the UV editor, scale the selected UV islands up or down and rotate them as needed to achieve the desired result. You can use the S key to scale and the R key to rotate the UV islands. Repeat these steps for the tree trunk too. Select the trunk's faces in the 3D viewport and project their UV from the front view, then adjust the UV island, scale and rotate it in the UV editor to achieve the desired results. Add a cylinder to your scene, set the vertices value to 8, Scale down the top vertices of the cylinder to create a slightly narrower top for the trunk. Extrude the cylinder once by selecting the top face and pressing E. Move the extruded face upwards to create the desired height for the trunk. Scale down the extruded vertices to taper the top of the trunk. To add more detail to the trunk, you can insert a lookout by pressing an edge loop and pressing Ctrl R. Move the lookout up or down to adjust the shape of the trunk. Add a cube to your scene. Level the edges of the cube with two segments by selecting the cube, pressing Ctrl B and moving your mouse to adjust the bevel size and then left clicking to confirm. Scale up the bevel cube to create the main foliage for the tree. Duplicate the cube by pressing Shift D, scan it down and rotate it to create a smaller cube near the bottom of the main cube. Adjust its position as necessary to create a layered effect. Repeat the process of duplicating, scaling down and rotating cube to fill the bottom of the main cube with additional foliage cube. Adjust their position and rotation to achieve the desired look. As a final touch, duplicate the main cube once more, duplicate the scale it down and position it on the top of the tree.
Let's start by adding the cylinder to your scene, press Shift A, select Mesh and your cylinder. In the Add Cylinder option, on the left side of the viewport, select the vertices value to 6. With the cylinder selected, enter Edit Mode by pressing Tab. Select the top vertices of the cylinder, press S to scale the selected vertices down to create the narrower top of the pine tree trunk. After scaling, press G to grab and move the selected vertices into the desired position. To add some additional details to the trunk, press E to extrude the selected vertices, move your mouse to adjust the extrusion height and left click to confirm the extrusion. Add a cylinder to your scene, set the vertices value to 16. Enter Edit Mode by pressing Tab. Adjust the size of the cylinder. Select the top vertices of the cylinder and scale them down to create a narrower top for the foliage. Remove the bottom face of the cylinder. Select all the remaining faces of the cylinder. Press Alt E and choose Extrude Faces along Normals. This will extrude the faces outward, creating the initial shape of the foliage. Select the bottom face of the cylinder. Press Alt E and choose Extrude Individual Faces. Adjust the extrusion as necessary to create the desired shape for the bottom of the foliage. Change the pivot point to individual origins. Scale up the bottom faces of the foliage by pressing S and adjusting the scale. Switch to edge mode by pressing Ctrl Tab and choosing edge. With all the edges selected, press Ctrl B to bevel them. Move your mouse to adjust the bevel size and scroll up or down to add or reduce the number of segments. Two segments should be sufficient for the bevel. Switch to wireframe mode by pressing Z. Select the middle vertices of the foliage and scale them down to create the appropriate shape for the pine tree foliage. Position and rotate the foliage to the desired location for the tree. Duplicate the foliage as necessary to create additional branches or layers of foliage. Place the duplicated foliage in the correct position to create a fine pine tree. Add any shape to the scene, enter edit mode by pressing tab, merge the vertices of the shape at the center by selecting all the vertices and pressing M, choosing add center from the merge option. Extrude the main vertex of the shape and position it to create the initial shape of the tree trunk. Repeat this process as necessary to create the desired shape of the trunk, adding more extrusions and adjusting their positions. Seems that our tree appears small. Let's add a skin modifier to give it volume. With the trunk selected, go to the modifiers tab. In the properties panel, click on add modifier and choose skin. Adjust the radius and segments as needed to make the trunk thicker and more substantial. To adjust the scaling of the trunk in edit mode, you can select the specific vertices instead of the entire trunk. Instead of pressing S to scale, press Ctrl A. Adjust the scaling to make the bottom of the tree larger and the top branches small. For additional details and smoothness, uh, you can add a subdivision surface modifier to the trunk, add the modifier from the modifier step and adjust the levels as needed to increase the smoothness of the trunk surface. To add leaves, start by adding a cube to the scene, add a subdivision surface modifier to the cube and adjust its settings. Position, rotate and scale the cube to create the initial shape of the leaves. You can adjust its shape using the proportional edit to shape it more organically. Create variations of the leaves by duplicating and modifying their shapes using different scales, rotations and proportions to add visual variety to the tree's branches. Place the leaves on the branches of the tree by duplicating them and positioning them accordingly. One of the advantages of using base meshes and manipulating them is that it allows for quick experimentation and iteration. You can easily adjust the shape, size, 
and proportions of the trunk and branches to create different tree designs. While the techniques provide a solid starting point, it's always a good idea to reference real-life trees or existing tree designs to enhance your creations. Observing different tree species, their and branching patterns can inspire you and help you achieve more realistic or stylized results. Reference images can guide you in shaping the trunk, positioning the branches, and creating appealing foliage arrangements. Imagination plays a crucial role in the creative process. Don't be afraid to experiment with different variations, explore different combinations of shapes, and push the boundaries of what a tree can look like. By incorporating your own artistic vision and style, you can create cool, cute local trees that stand out and add charm to your scenes. Remember, practice and experimentation are key. With each new tree you create, you'll gain more experience and improve your skills in modeling and composition. So, enjoy the creative journey, have fun exploring different ideas, and let your imagination guide you to create an impressive collection of local trees. In order to export trees into the Unity, select the objects you want to export in Blender. Apply the rotation and scale by pressing Ctrl A and choosing rotation and scale from the apply menu. Go to File, Export, FBX. In FBX Export Settings, ensure that the limit to selected object is checked. Set the forward axis to Live Forward and the up axis to Z up. Name the file and choose the location where you want to save it and click Export. Open Unity and create a new project or open an existing one. Import the FEX file by either dragging it into the project panel or going to Assets, import new asset and selecting the FPX file. Create a new material in Unity by right clicking in the project panel, selecting Create Material and giving it a name. Drag the same image that you used for the material in Blender to the base map slot of the material in Unity. This will apply the texture to the material. Select the imported objects, dragging it into the Unity scene view. If you notice that the rotation of objects is incorrect, go to the project panel, find the imported effect file, and click on it. In the inspector panel, navigate to the model tab, click A, access conversion, and then click apply to save the changes. Now you have successfully exported objects from Blender to Unity, applied material, and corrected any rotation issues. Your project are ready to be used in your Unity project.